This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Welcome into Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. That's Jay Delsing. We're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Jay, I'm going to jump right into it. I cannot, Let's go. I cannot wait to visit with our guest, one of the great players, one of the great people in our game of golf, and that is the Hall of Famer, Lee Trevino. I can't wait. Danny, this guy well first of all he's got a st louis connection he won the st louis was it called the st louis classic or the st louis open st louis open i think in 1973 i think it was and to have him back last year for the celebrity shootout as one of our legends it's interesting because the guy never stops talking and and he's so fun to be around well i know you're going to ask him about that he came back for the ascension charity classic it was that shootout at norwood hills and one of the things i want to ask him and maybe you will too is just how has the course changed or what his initial impressions were going back to Norwood Hills? Oh, man, 100%. I mean, this is a guy, he eats, drinks, and sleeps golf, 24-7 golf. I can remember, I think we told a story again a while back, but back in the day when I first got on the PGA Tour, he was still playing, and Dave and Mike Hill were two guys that played all the time, and Lee was paired with uh, Mike Hill, and Mike went up to him and said, uh, hey, Lee, I'm paired with you today, and I don't feel like talking too much. And he goes, that's fine, because all you have to do is listen. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't care if you talk. He just wants to. He just talks he, all day. You know, he's 80-plus years old, and still I've seen so many interviews with him and podcast interviews, those kind of things. He's still sharp as a tech, and that's what I love, because he can talk about today's game, but also reflect on – being struck by lightning, or maybe I'm going to ask him about his time in a movie with Happy Gilmore. I can't wait to visit with him. I agree, and you know, what's really weird, Danny, is he did not have a long career. And that, That's amazing to me. Doing the research and going, is this right? I mean, he won, I believe it's six majors in 29 golf tournaments in 13 years. I mean, that's Jack Nicholas Prime and eight. That's Tiger Prime. And also a fellow like Arnold Palmer was still playing at the time. You know what I mean? That's that's a short window. So you mentioned that he was at the tail end of his career. You're just getting going on the PGA Tour. Did you ever get paired with him? Or if you did or didn't, did you just go out and say, you know what, I, I want to watch Lee Trevino and see how he goes about his business? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I used to go to the back, go to the range and just sit down. And like I remember Tom Weisskopf was the tallest guy on tour, uh, he and Andy North. And I went up to him and I introduced myself to him. I said, hey, Mr. Weisskopf, you know, this is, my name is Jay Delsing. Do you mind if I just watch you hit some balls? He goes, no, come on, you know, ask me questions, do whatever. And just watching him, his rhythm, you know, because he's a big man, six foot three, which back then was unheard of, you know. And so I'd watch him. And then you go watch a guy like Lee Trevino, who's five foot seven and doesn't swing anything like it. And it was amazing because both of them were great and went about it entirely differently. We have a national podcast together, which has been fantastic. We've had big guests from Tom Watson, uh, David Faraday. We had uh, this past week, which was awesome. We had the chance to visit with the aforementioned Andy North. We had Curtis Strange on. I I'm going to throw this at you because Lee Trevino was a guy that would go pound balls after he was done. He's a great ball striker, as you well know. But all these guys say, if I could do it differently – and go back and, and practice after my round, probably 90% would be spent chipping, putting, and 10% would be you know hitting the driver, hitting balls, doing that kind of thing. Because if I was going to win an event or if I was going to dominate or if I was going to put myself in contention, they all said... I need to get my short game right. I, I find that incredibly interesting. Yeah, it's it's amazing. When I tell anybody that wants to really get better at the game, start from the green and work backwards because, you know, Danny, when you think about it, you're standing on the tee and you usually have a 30 to 40 wide yard fairway to hit into. But then you're as you get closer to the hole, that cup is a little over four inches wide, man. That target's so much narrower. You're you're spend so many more shots from a hundred yards on in than you do from back on the tees. You mentioned visiting with Lee Trevino and you're the kind of guy, Jay, I don't know if people know this, uh, you're not quiet 
Uh, you, no. you, 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 I'm not quiet. You, you're, you're happy to go up and say, how you doing? I'm, I'm Jay Delsing. I'm new to the tour. Uh, I'd like to pick your brain. Were most guys willing to do that? You know, the big names on tour, were they willing to accept you and say, yeah, I'll talk to you. And this is some of the things that I do both on and off the course to, to become a PGA tour player and to stick around. Some of them were, you know, Danny, it's interesting because the middle layer, there were not a lot of guys glad handing you when you first got out you're there. you're fighting for spots. You're and fighting you're for take, money. And their spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And each year you have 50 new, younger, stronger, faster guys coming out, and there's only 125 jobs. If you think about that, relate that to the other sports. We all love the other sports. I mean, there's 26 men on a baseball team now. There's 25 guys on a, on a hockey roster, you know, and 30-plus and teams. 125? Yeah. I mean, that's a low, low number. And so even um, if you look, the NBA has 10 or 11 guys on a team. And, and you know, so they'll have 300 or so NBA players. It, it's just a really, really small number. So it probably took, Danny, three years before. Before you felt comfortable before, doing it. Before I still knew there were guys that I, you know, look, my personality can easily rub you the wrong way. I totally get that. <laughs> it's not a, That's not hard to, for me to understand. But some guys would just want to help you because they know the game is hard enough. And that, look, if you can do it, God bless you. You know, I'm trying to do it. and uh, But uh, other guys would be like, I'm not, you know, you get paired with them and not say a word to you all day long. Were you willing, though, to do that? I guarantee you were the kind of guy that said, even though he was trying to steal your lunch, you were willing to help those kind of guys out. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I don't know, you can't root against other people. I just can't do that. I, I I'm... If I'm in a playoff with you, I want to win. Yeah, I want to win with every fiber of my being. But you're going to stand over a three foot putt and me root for you to miss it. I can't do that. I'd much rather root for me to birdie the hole, and you lip a putt out or something like that, and have it go my way, as opposed to you know having something awful. It's more the sportsman, the way that I was raised, and the way that golfers were raised. It's a there's an, a mutual admiration, I guess, Danny, because the game's so hard. Well, speaking of missing putts in a playoff, we saw that last. Last week with Jordan Spieth, of all guys to miss on a couple of putts that probably he makes nine out of ten, he pushed them both right. Yep. One lipped out, and he he loses in the playoff at uh, Hilton Head. I, I just I was shocked to see him losing that spot. He was our pick. Yeah, he was our pick. We had we had him, and we have been hot with our picks, folks. If you're interested in laying a couple dollars down, pay attention to uh, Beyond the Fairways, and we talk a little bit about it here as well. But. Yeah, for for Jordan, I guarantee you, Matthew Fitzpatrick was feeling like he was dodging bombs. Yes, you know, and and then all of a sudden he stuffs it on eighteen. So, how about Matthew Fitzpatrick hitting a pitching wedge from one hundred and seventy three yards? One hundred and seventy three wedge. I'm like, that's a typo. So, if you were playing back in the day, one seventy three, what club are you using? <laughs> Um, let's say depending that on just normal, like yeah. normal conditions, yeah. the wind is is settled. What are you hitting one seventy three between the seven and an eight? <laughs> and, and I'm just thinking wedged. maybe an eight because I'd be really jacked up. But for the most part, seven. And and I was Danny. I was always in the top ten of the longest players yeah. in my generation. That's why I bring it up. I know. I it's crazy. It is absolutely insane. What is the key? And I think this relates to the average golfer that's out there, and they're the duffer, and but they've got money on the line, and that's what makes golf great because you can be. Jay Delsing or Dan McLaughlin, who's probably a 14 or a 12, whatever I am, and you're scratch, and we can compete and all of a sudden come down to a playoff or that final hole. I guess you play it the same to an extent, but you're kind of in match play at that point because you got to look at what the other guy's doing, and all of a sudden the, the money's on the line. So what, what's the key when you go into a playoff or for the, even the average guy going into that time where you got to beat that guy and you got one hole to go? So the key is this. Always, if you, especially when you're on the green, always expect your opponent to make. Always expect your opponent to make because if he, if you're not and he does, you'll never step up and make your putt. You will be so shattered mentally if you're not expecting him to make. So I'll do that now when I'm playing in a little match or something and, I, and I've got a three-footer and my buddy's got a 12-footer, I'm expecting him to make because... Really? Yeah, because if he does... And then if he doesn't, he with it's like enough. a bonus. Yeah, once we get... To, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that on these, this show too. That'll, that'll fill up a couple of shows, some of our our antics out on the course, but you need to be prepared mentally because when your opponent does something really, really well, it can deflate you and it can really 
you can lose your focus and your attention. And so always assume your opponent's going to make, and if he misses, it's a gigantic bonus. Golf with Jay Delsing. It's presented by Darty Business Solutions. Later in the show, there was news this week with Tiger Woods. We'll get into that. PGA Tour stop, if you've been watching this weekend, team format, which makes it a lot of fun. But up next, we're going to visit with the Hall of Famer, one of the greats in the game, one of the characters in sports, and that is Lee Trevino. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, presented by Darty Business Solutions. And before we hear from Lee, let's get our tip of the cap. Thanks, Danny. The tip of the cap is brought to you by our friends, Colin Burnt and Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. 314-966-0303. Colin's a great guy. They have any sort of vehicle you want. We appreciate their support of the show. We are tipping our cap this week, Danny, to teachers, for golf teachers, for golf instructors, the teachers that are teaching our children, anybody that's taking their time to try to help others, to try to gain some wisdom and understanding to those folks. And when it comes to golf, our PGA professionals that are out there growing the game, helping people with the game. We appreciate their efforts. We're tipping our cap to them. School's getting out. We're going to have more kids on the golf course. It's going to be an awesome thing to see. So that's the tip of the cap. And we appreciate Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood for supporting us. 314-966-0303. And those teachers are busy right now as the weather begins to change and summer is right around the corner. Also right around the corner, Coming up next, the great Lee Trevino on Golf with Jay Delsing. That was On the Range with Jay Delsing. For news on the latest golf equipment tips and to ask Jay a question, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. Coming up, it's the Front Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. Darty Business Solutions, the title sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing show, is a leader in our community in so many areas. Do they have over 2,500 teammates in over 30 states and three countries? Yes, they do. Are they the largest IT consulting firm in our area? Yes, they are. Are they the largest software developer in the St. Louis region? Of course they are. But here are a few other important things to know about Doherty Business Solutions. They are the presenting sponsor of the Ascension Charity Classic. They are the presenting sponsor and were the first presenting sponsor of the Advocate Professional Golfers event at Glen Echo that will be held there this year as well. They are also the founders of Access Point. This is a community game changer. It builds diversity in the IT workforce. Hundreds of mostly African-American women are getting fifty to $60,000 a year jobs right out of high school. That's right, right out of high school. Ron Darty, company founder, chaired the 2023 Heart Ball this year. It supported the local American Heart Association chapters and raised over $600,000 in one evening. These are more examples of the many things that Darty Business Solutions does in our community. The Legends of Golf return to St. Louis in 2023. You won't want to miss one of the strongest fields in golf. Ernie Els, Steve Stricker, Bernard Longer, John Daly, and many more when they compete for the 2023 Ascension Charity Classic title, September 5th through the 10th at historic Norwood Hills Country Club. All proceeds benefit area charities. Together, we were able to donate over $1 million to those most in need last year. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. The official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show is the Dean Team. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They provide me, Pearlie, and our families with all of our cars. The reason we went with the Dean Team is because we could trust them. We knew at the Dean Team they were going to take care of us, and they have. They made the entire car buying experience so simple. It was more than just simply selling us a vehicle. The Dean Team made our car buying experience seamless and enjoyable throughout that entire process. The Dean Team has the complete car buying steps done before you head into their showroom. They're ready to answer all your questions and set your mind at ease when buying a vehicle. At the Dean Team, they offer new, pre-owned, and all the services included with your Dean Team purchase. When you're with the Dean Team, they become lifelong friends. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, located at Manchester Road in Kirkwood. The Dean Team. This is the Front Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. 
The Front Nine is presented by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through the 10th at Norwood Hills Country Club. Find out more at ascensioncharityclassic.com. What a pleasure it is to bring in the great Golf Hall of Famer, Lee Trevino. And Lee, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time so much. No problem. How you guys doing, man? We've been down here in an ice storm, so I'm kind of, uh, my the daughter's birthday today, so um, I'll be talking fast. I'll be talking real fast today. <laughs> Do you ever not talk fast, though? You always are yeah, talking every fast. Once, every, every once in a while, you know, when the, when the priest used to make me say the Hail Marys, and, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I couldn't remember all the words, so I'd go real slow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> understood. Understood. Oh, my gosh. Lee, I, I sit there and think about your career and a fantastic career. But one one thing that co- comes to mind, Lee, and I want you to talk about this just a little bit, please. You you really did accomplish what you accomplished in a short period of time, maybe 13 years or so on tour. Tell us a little yeah, bit about yeah. that. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me all the time. They always say, you know, they, they think that I had a, a, a long career, but I did not. I, I played 13 years, and then I hurt my back. I got hit by lightning, as you well know, in 75. And then I was out for another year, so I really didn't even play 13 years. And then I uh, I, I, I didn't have anything to, to do, so I had no options. I had to get my body back in shape and, and get back out there, but... Yeah, 13 years was it. Uh, I won six majors, 29 tournaments in those 13 years. That, you know, that, that all that means is that I hit a hell of a lot of practice balls. You <laughs> well, know what I'm saying? You know, you jumped right into one of the questions we're going to get into, and that is getting struck by lightning at the Western Open. I- I'm so curious. I mean, how were you able to bounce back from that? What was that life experience like for Lee Trevino? Well, you know, it kind of set me back a little bit. Nobody really knew too much about, uh, you know, lightning. And uh, it kind of entered. I was with Jerry Hurd, which I thought was one of the Finest players I'd ever been up against, uh, and he never played again. I mean, this guy would have would have set some records. He would have won some majors. I mean, it's not much telling what he could have done. And I was with Mike Fetchick, which was a a big uh, club pro out of New York, but he was a, a tremendous player. He had done he had uh, played on the senior tour and and done whatever he had to do. But the three of us were the oh, I think it was a par three, twelve or thirteen there at Butler. And at that time, they didn't have the the sirens and the warnings and all that stuff about uh, you know about lightning and uh, in the air. So we we just they called the tournament because it was cloudy, and it was fixing to rain. So we stayed there on the 13th hole. And I guess the lightning bolt, what we figured it it hit the lake and the rays bounced, in other words, sideways and caught me, Bobby Nichols, Arnold Palmer's golf club. Uh, Mike Fetchick, believe it or not, didn't didn't have any problems, but uh, it ruptured my back and it ruptured uh, Jerry Hurd's back, and uh, he's never come back from it. You know, I, I talked uh, I talked to him not too long ago, about a year ago. He's down at Fiddlesticks in Florida. You know, I I, I had a unique way of playing, as you well know. I, I play golf differently from everybody else. For some reason, you know, I learned to, to hold on to the club and keep the club face square to target longer than anybody else. And I wouldn't have been able to participate today. The courses are too long. They're, the, the greens are hidden in front. You have to go in the air. You know, I could bump and run. If, if I would have been playing in the Open Championship in Great Britain from the time I was 20, I probably would have won that tournament 10 times. You know, because that's the way I played. I bump and run. I hit it. I hit a little cut. Can't get in much trouble. So it didn't really make any difference to me what course I played. I didn't have to look at it. If it had a tee, a fairway, and a green, you got me, baby. I'm ready for you. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, Lee. I I can remember just getting on tour in 1985, but you kind of came out of the booth to win a major down at Shoal Creek, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I came out of the booth. Uh, I hadn't played in, uh, in three years. Uh, you know, I dabbled a little bit, but I didn't play. I'd won the PGA uh, in in '74 at Tanglewood, so I was uh, exempt to play in that one. So I came out of the booth, uh-huh, uh huh, and ran into a golf course that was extremely hard. Uh, the rough was absolutely unbelievable there. No one could get out of that rough uh, there at Shoal Creek. I, I liked the layout, and it was kind of flat, as you well uh, you remember. There was not much undulation in there. Plus, my wife had bought me a putter in Holland. And it was a ping A blade, which I had never putted with a ping. 
and I kept and I kept shooting sixty fours with it. And I said, "Man, this way, you know, I always put it with a blade." I said, "I didn't know it was this easy to make a putt." <laughs> you got any more of those, Lee? I could use one. No, of those. I, right. <laughs> hey, I had the guy. You know, you know that uh, that uh, Carson made me two of them. He put a line on one of them, and he didn't on the other one. And uh, they made them for me. Uh, I, well, he made me one, but I bought the other one. It didn't have a line on it. And I still have both of them. Yeah, I still have them both. And usually I don't keep golf clubs. I give them away. You know what I do with all my old clubs? Believe it or not, I don't sell them. I don't do anything. I I, I take them to my pro at Preston Trails, and I'll have them all bundled up. And I says, can you take these and give them to the first tee, but don't tell them where they came from? He said, we'll take care of it. I love that. <laughs> that is and terrific. that's what I do with the clubs, yeah. I don't, I don't want them to know they're mine. No, uh uh-uh. Hey, Lee, how come you don't like going into locker rooms? I'm curious about that. Well, I thought, I think it's a waste of time. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, okay. I, I, I spent, listen, listen, when I started the tour, I would go and play and I'd go two and a half, three hours early. I'd hit balls for three hours. Then I'd go play the, the tournament. I, when I finish, and, and, and Dale will tell you this, Jay, Jay, Jay will tell you this. And then when I finished, I would go to the driving range and I'd hit balls till dark. Then I would drive my car to a fast food place. I'd get a milkshake, two hamburgers, and some french fries. And then I would look for a driving range. And then I would hit balls till 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And I did this all the time. Besides that, I ran three miles at the track every day. I'm, I'm suffering from it now because I've got bone on bone on my knees. But um, this, is, this is what I did. I don't like to do anything that wastes time. I, I, when the sun's out, golf ball's meant to be hit. People call me up. These young, these young guys, these young guys call me up and they say, you know, hey, how you doing? I said, fine. I said, how you doing in the tournament? He said, well, he said, you know, I'm home now, and he says, I'm just getting, I'm working on it a little bit. And I said, well, what time is it there? He said, eleven. And you still home? Yeah, we well, ain't gonna make it, baby. No, nope. you ain't gonna make it if you're home at eleven o'clock. You you should have done hit. You should have done hit five hundred balls by eleven o'clock. Lee. You understand whether they're chip, you kick them, you throw them, whatever, whatever you do. If you if you want to make it in golf, you have got to put the time in, and you got to think it, you got to eat it, you got to sleep it, and, and and that's that's. Now, saying all that, I, I with the exception of, of of my wife, I haven't had a hell of a a, a, a great time. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You know, I haven't been anywhere. Yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit about 1971. Some of the years, I mean, you won the Varden five times. And to do that on the PGA Tour, people have no idea how hard it is to do one time. To do five times, but then to win what you did in 71, where you won the U.S. Open and beat Nicholas in a playoff. Then you went and won the Canadian Open a tournament Jack never won. And then a week later, you had perhaps the greatest 20 day streak of golf in the history of the game. Yeah, I had uh, I, I had a, a great putting streak there. You, you know, you, you played this game at a high level, and all of a sudden you grab a putter, you grab a stroke, and then you start making everything. Unfortunately, you can't remember what the hell you're doing, and so you can't uh, you you can't uh, do it again next week and the week after. But I, I for some reason I I had a hell of a three weeks of ball striking. Not not much more than what I generally do, but the three golf courses fell right into line. Burkdale I knew about. I had played it before. Uh, in 1969, I had played it. I did not know Richelieu, but it wasn't that difficult of a golf course. It was well-treed and all that. I like that. I like that because I play Royal Oaks here in Dallas, and it's tree-lined also. That's what I – Tennyson Park East, that's where I learned to play. Real tree lines, you know, the limbs reach over the fairways. I mean, they're not even as wide as they look. And then Marion, I just absolutely fell in love with it. How couldn't you fall in love with it? It wasn't a monstrous golf course. Uh, it, it, it made, it, it had a few turns, but it had, a, it had quite a few dog legs to the right, Marion did. And, uh, I like that. You know, I, I, I like that in a major championship when you give me a few holes that go to the right. Number one went to the right. You remember you had to, you had to drive it down the right side number. Yeah, and and uh, and 18 had the big tree on the right. You had to cut it off that tee. Yeah, I, I like that. So, but the putter was what was hot. It, it, it was so hot, Jay. It was so hot that I didn't even line them up half the time. 
And in other words, I just walked up and hit him. I wow. mean, if you remember, if you remember when I won the playoff, Mr. Lou, I had a four footer for a birdie to win the tournament and the camera missed it. Right. The, the camera, the camera missed it because Mr. Lou was celebrating with his little hat on his head and the camera was over there. And by the time they came back to the green, hell, I'd put my ball down and hit it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even line it up. I have always wanted to ask you this question because in doing some research and reading an article many, many years ago about your cameo in Happy Gilmore, that you yeah. actually you actually kind of didn't like it. Is is I've always wanted to ask you, is that true? Well, I, I, I you know, I, I've never seen it from I've never seen it. From, really? Uh, uh, you know, all the way through. But I wasn't used to all the bad language. And, and I'm, I kind of been a, a protector of bad language around ladies and around kids. And um, it, it kind of disturbed me a little bit. Now, today, no, no problem. I could do a movie now. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the, those words are used so much now that nobody would laugh. You know what I'm saying? I sure. mean, but back then, that was a kind of a different thing. And I, 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 it, it kind of bothered me a little bit. You know, I, it, it really did. Yeah. Lee, we're we're on a, a much more national level, but Danny and I are located here in St. Louis. And I know when yeah. and you won the St. Louis Open, I think in 1971, and then you got to come back for the Ascension Charity Classic last year. That oh, I was loved it. such a thrill for golf fans here yeah. to have you come back and and at the place, you know, where where you won the St. Louis Open. Well, and I wanted to say one thing: I didn't recognize the golf course much, but I'll tell you this. I don't know when they redid the golf course, but but my hat's off to the membership and the architect and the people that were behind it because they did a hell of a job. It is wonderful. I really enjoyed coming back and playing. The clubhouse is immaculate, and um, it was uh, the members are lucky to have it. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. Absolutely. What is it like being Lee Trevino? Because when people talk about great characters in sports, you're one of the great characters, not only in golf, but you're legendary in across all walks of life. So when you're walking down the street, you're in an airport, whatever the case may be, what is it yeah. like being Lee Trevino? Well, you, 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 the, you, the first thing that you do when you leave the house is you say to yourself, be nice. Be nice and say hello to everybody because people are going to come and get you. And, and you can you can have a fork almost up to your mouth, and, and a guy will grab your elbow and says, I, "How you doing? Nice to see you." Because I I'm approachable. They wouldn't have done that to Hogan because Hogan would have hit him with a wedge. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, but but they know that I'm approachable. I expect it. My wife told me once. She says, "When you quit doing it, you might as well stay home." I said, "You know you're right." When they quit doing it, I said, "You're exactly right." And I told her, I said, you know, I tell this story. I said, you know something? I said, the pandemic was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And they said, why? I said, I put a hat on without a logo. I put a mask on and I put sunglasses on and I could go anywhere I wanted to go. And anybody bothered me. And I told him, I said, I went to the grocery store and I'm walking around the grocery store. And a guy comes up behind me and he said, I know who you are. He said, I know I recognize you. He said, I know who you are. He said, I heard you talking. And I said, oh, Lord, how are you, sir? He said, fine. He said, listen, he said, I need a golf lesson. I said, a golf <laughs> lesson? He said, he said, I said, yes, this is the truth. And I said, you would need a golf lesson, huh? I said, yeah. Why would you want a golf lesson from me? I said, listen, I'm half blind. I can't hear very well. I'm 82 years old. I've got the yips. I'm hitting the ball. I said, and I'm hitting the ball so short that you can hear it land. <laughs> and I said, if you tested my swing speed, you couldn't get a ticket in a school zone. I said, I said, so, I said so when do you want to start this lesson? <laughs> this is what I told him. Yeah. <laughs> so what was his reaction when you said all that? He laughed. Yeah. He laughed. He, I said, he, I said, I said, no, nah, I said, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. He said, okay, okay. <laughs> Hey, Isn't that crazy? That is awesome. That is awesome. Lee, take us back a little bit to the some of the hurdles of playing the tour as a Mexican American. As you know, Tiger gets a lot of credit for for blowing the game up like he did. But man, the Curtis versus the Charlie, you know, these guys, the Lee Elders, the Lee Trevinos, you guys back in the day, man, I, I can only imagine. What it, what it was like, and it couldn't have been easy. No, you know what? We, we didn't have 
I, I never had any problem whatsoever. I was never discriminated on. The problem that I had mostly was with the media trying to get me, trying to get me to say something because at the time the PJ had just done away with the uh, with, with with that article in 1963, uh, the Caucasian article. Uh, about uh, you know about uh, uh, playing, but I never had that problem, Jay. Not at all. You know what, Lee? We're going to wrap it up with this. What are you most proud of as you reflect back on your career? Oh, thank God, yeah, the, the winning the the open from Jack, uh, the playoff. That's what made me. That's when I arrived. Yeah, 1971. I think about it all the time. That that same Jack Nicholas finished second to you four times. And I know yeah. you know that. And I know he knows <laughs> that, more importantly. And he never finished second to me. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> there you yeah. go. I, I, I never finished second to him, yeah. Hey, Lee, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to visit with you. Thank and, you very uh, much. God bless you, I appreciate you, man. it. Thanks for doing God this. God bless you. That was The Front Nine, presented by the Ascension Charity Classic. Coming up, it's the back nine and more of golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, St. Louis, Delsing here. Call Redbird Heating and Cooling or visit them on the web at redbirdhvac.com to become part of their team. They offer great pay and the opportunity to become a licensed HVAC specialist while you work for them. This is a fantastic opportunity to earn a great wage. Don't wait. Call them today. 314-320-9507. That's 314-320-9507. Redbird Heating and Cooling. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to JDelsingGolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. This is Jay Delsing. Did you know that Marcone is the largest authorized appliance parts distributor in the world? That's right, the largest in the world. Did you know that Marcone is based right here in our backyard of St. Louis, Missouri? Well, that's pretty impressive. What's more impressive is the way that they give back to the St. Louis community and our region. CEO Jim Sowers has donated service dogs to the wounded servicemen and women of our armed forces. Suites at St. Louis Blues Games have been donated and auctioned off in which all proceeds were given to the backstoppers. Then there was the Marcone Police and Firefighters Viewing Deck at the Ascension Charity Classic this past year. It was a huge success, so much so that it's being implemented on other tour stops around on the PGA Tour. To Jim Sowers and his incredible team at Marcone, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Marcone, a proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. This is the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf, located in Brentwood. See what Pro-Am Golf can do for you. Golf with Jay Delsing, it's presented by Darty Business Solutions. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. That is a thrill for me to visit with Lee Trevino. I've, I've had a chance to interview Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, some of the greats of the game, certainly some of the greats in football, basketball, and baseball. I'm going to put that in my top 10 of visits with professional athletes. What a fun guy, Lee Trevino. You know what's interesting, Danny? I'm sitting there thinking he is a really fun guy. 
very interesting. And I feel like we kind of talked to him for two or three oh, yeah. hours. He was just getting fired up when um, we let him go. But I, I love the, what he said. He goes, um, if the sun is shining, golf balls are meant to be hit. That's right. And he was a ball beater, man. He stood on that range and he would hit all sorts of different shots and just work on it and work on it. He had one of the most famous caddies of all time, Herman Mitchell. We call Big Mitch. And he he had to weigh every bit of 300 pounds. And he was every bit of, of as much of a character as Lee was. And so maybe next time we get Leon, we'll talk about Big Mitch. I just remember him winning the PGA Championship down at Shoal Creek in 1980. I think it was 1984, I think, yeah. where he said he literally came out of the broadcast booth and won that, that tournament. Danny, that, that golf course is a bear. How about being struck by lightning? Are you kidding me? And I, I know that in talking with you, we've talked off the air about this. You dealt with that in a tournament. You said, boys, that's it. I'm out of here. Lightning's in the area. I'm getting off the golf course. Well, and, and part of it, part of how we learned was what happened to, to Lee at, at the Western Open. I mean, back in the day where we didn't have all of this attention to, to golf in the tour, Danny, we didn't have the Thor guard systems and people weren't really all that plugged in. And then Lee gets struck by lightning. And I think he said, Jerry, poor Jerry heard it basically ended his career, blew out his back. I was playing in the U S open up in Hazeltine and I pulled myself and my caddy and, and the, my other two playing partners, Dave Rumbles and Bobby Watkins and their caddies left as well. We were walking down towards the green on the 10th, at Hazeltine, and 15 minutes later, seven people were killed by lightning on oh the 11th tee, which is right about where we would have been. So we have come a long, long way, not only in, in some, of the, some of the equipment and the technology, but, man, and, and taking care of people because nobody needs to be dying on the golf course by lightning. And I would assume back then, you know, it wasn't as prevalent now where the horns go off. There's plenty of time to, to get in your cart or walk back to the clubhouse, even just the average players. It was just a couple of weeks ago. If you were playing, we had terrible weather here in St. Louis. Matter of fact, it was last Saturday and people were down in their basement. I was actually out playing golf and the horn went off and they said, let's go. And I said to my partner, I said, we're going to from 17 to 18. We probably can make it. He said, hell no. He said, I'm going in right now. So we went in. I'm curious though, did your partners give you any trouble back then by saying, no, 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 Let, let's finish this out. Let's keep playing. No, they could. But So they but, were with you. Yeah. But, and they, they had the choice. They did not have to do that. There's a little known rule, Danny, that if you feel like your life's in danger, you're able to leave the golf course like that. And the funny thing is, those golf fans in Minneapolis, I'll never forget them, they were so gung-ho for this event. They, they, there were probably 20,000 of them sitting in metal bleachers, and they didn't want to lose oh their gosh. spot. And it could have been a catastrophe, but and it still was a, a really terrible situation. But we've got the bottom line is we've come a long way, and we're doing so much better in that regard. Well, for people that don't know, Jay Delsing played in over 700 PGA Tour events, but he was toting bags out at Norwood, and that's how you really got a love of the game. And so we heard from Lee Trevino – you know, he, he played one in St. Louis, first time back at the Ascension Charity Classic uh, last year just to participate in the shootout and do the interviews, the promotion, all that kind of stuff. What I was really wanting to get into is how the course has changed. Uh, you were there many years ago. You're playing in the Ascension this year out at Norwood. If you're a fan that goes to Norwood or has a chance to to play Norwood, and they've got two courses, the East and the West, they'll play on the West, obviously, uh, for the championship coming up or the tournament coming up. How has the course changed? If I'm out there walking around, what, what are the biggest differences that you see? From Lee's era and back in the 70s, they've, they've redone probably seven holes, six, seven holes, where the first hole is the same. The second hole used to be a short par three, kind of a medium length par three, about a 175, 180 I yards. I love the second hole. Down the hill, it had that lake down yeah. there. And then the third hole was a little short par four that kind of banked up the hill and kind of teed off on the side of the hill over there. And so they combined, they went from the second T to the third green, and that's the par five. And then in the back nine, they they, they changed quite a few holes around Danny, starting on, on 13, 
Uh, oh, they also changed number number six and number seven. So there, there's been a quite a bit of change going on. The, the most significant come in the back nine where you get to 15 and 16 where they added two holes back in this property that Norwood owned. It's absolutely beautiful. It, the 15th is a long par five, 610 yards, abuts along this beautiful meandering creek on the right. And it's it's a really, really good hole. And Padre Harrington last year was smashing driver and knocking it on in two at 610 yards. Crazy. And 52 years old. Crazy. I, I think it's great. I, and I don't know where you're at with this, but I'm very, very interested to hear what you have to say. Uh, I thought it was great that Lee Trevino was in Happy Gilmore. Now, he, he said that, you know, the language and things like that uh, he didn't like, but uh, and he hasn't seen the movie, which was shocking to me. I thought Tin Cup and Happy Gilmore were good for the game in bringing in just average fans to have a good time, watch it, and maybe have a little bit of an interest in golf. For those, though, that played on the PGA Tour or lived the life that you lived and continue to live, I wonder if guys were like, eh, I don't know about this. I, I'm not so sure this is good, and this is not what we're all about. But I, I just think seeing those guys on the on the silver screen, I, I thought it was a good thing. I do too, Danny. I do too. And, and I think it just brought more attention to the game. And, and it's fun. I mean, Adam Sandler and Happy Gilmore, there was, there was a lot of fun with, with some of the, the twists, the Bob Barker thing, yes. you know, and all that, that stuff. Was the best. It was fun. And then the, the what's interesting about Kevin Costner and Tin Cup is that so many of those things really happen. Happened to Gary McCord. It was based off of Gary McCord with him dropping a ball down to his final ball and having to go over water and put it in play. The Pelican scene was Gary McCord with his buddies in a rain delay, all sharing a room in a hotel room, uh, hotel and sharing the the room and saying, "I bet I can do this," because guys shared uh, hotel rooms back in the day. Absolutely, trying to cut expenses. And I mean, little di- people don't even realize this, Danny. Back in the day. Now that if you made the cut, which is when we were playing was low 70 in ties. Now it's low 65 in ties, but low 70 in ties. If you finished 71st, you didn't get paid. Wow. You made the cut, played four days, and didn't get paid. They used to only pay to 70 spots. And I can remember some of the older guys saying, well, I played four days. And if I was playing lousy, I almost wanted to miss the cut. Yeah. Because now my expenses got ran up. (laughs) And Boys I didn't get changed. paid. Oh, and r- ridiculous. And I mean, last place money was in the hundreds. Yeah. You know, you're making $300 or something like that. It didn't pay for anything. So that wraps up the back nine. We head to the 19th hole. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, presented by Doherty Business Solutions. And when we come back, there's news on Tiger Woods. Also, we're going to talk about team play in that format that's next on golf with jay delson this has been the back nine presented by pro-am golf we'll make the turn into the clubhouse and head into the 19th hole that's next on golf with jay delson Darty Business Solutions, the title sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show, is a leader in our community in so many areas. Do they have over 2,500 teammates in over 30 states and three countries? Yes, they do. Are they the largest IT consulting firm in our area? Yes, they are. Are they the largest software developer in the St. Louis region? Of course they are. But here are a few other important things to know about Doherty Business Solutions. They are the presenting sponsor of the Ascension Charity Classic. They are the presenting sponsor and were the first presenting sponsor of the Advocate Professional Golfers event at Glen Echo that will be held there this year as well. They are also the founders of Access Point. This is a community game changer. It builds diversity in the IT workforce. Hundreds of mostly African-American women are getting $50,000 to $60,000 a year jobs right out of high school. That's right, right out of high school. Ron Darty, company founder, chaired the 2023 Heart Ball this year. It supported the local American Heart Association chapters and raised over $600,000 in one evening. These are more examples of the many things that Darty Business Solutions does in our community. The Legends of Golf return to St. Louis in 2023. You won't want to miss one of the strongest fields in golf. Ernie Els, Steve Stricker, Bernard Longer, John Daly, and many more when they compete for the 2023 Ascension Charity Classic title, September 5th through the 10th at historic Norwood Hills Country Club. All proceeds benefit area charities. Together, we were able to donate over $1 million to those most in need last year. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. 
Hi, this is Peter Jacobson, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Powers Insurance and Risk Management combines 200 years of experience and cutting-edge products to deliver exceptional service, value, and clarity to their clients. Powers Insurance will deliver the highest quality property and casual insurance programs and strategic planning consultation services in the industry. Insurance can be overwhelming and confusing. It can be tough to understand. Powers Insurance simplifies it for you and your business. Powers Insurance and Risk Management will partner with you by providing ongoing assistance, consultation, and service that will help you control your insurance expenses and your workplace safety. Find out how Powers Insurance can help you. Visit powersinsurance.com. That's powersinsurance.com. Delsing here, and since 1975, Tom DeGrand and his children have founded and run the top golf store in all of St. Louis. It's located on South Brentwood. The DeGrands and Pro-Am Golf Centers have been helping all of St. Louis play better golf through better equipment, lessons on the indoor simulators, and by getting you fitted using the -the state-of-the-art technology. Call 314-647-8054 and set up your personal fitting with CJ. He's the best, and he will help you find the right equipment that's perfect for your game. For nearly 50 years, St. Louis has trusted their games to Pro-Am Golf. Don't you think it's time to take your game to the next level? Call 314-647-8054 or visit them on the web at ProAmGolfUSA.com. It's Pro-Am Golf. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, and let's head to the 19th hole. The 19th hole on Golf with Jay Delsing as we head down the stretch. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Our thanks to Lee Trevino for being a part of the show. Now, we advance what's happening in the world of golf from what happened this past week. Big, big news in my mind. Tiger Woods, his surgery, and again, it calls into question just how much longer can he play on the PGA Tour. Danny, you and I have talked about this so much off the air that watching him at Augusta the Friday and Saturday coming back, grinding it out to make the cut, barely able to walk. The guy's up must have the pain threshold of a it's lion or something like that. But it looks like he just had his right ankle fused. And I don't know what that means for the golf swing. I know it would be way worse if it was his left because of all the stress and things that are put on there. But he's just trying to figure out a way to, to get better and to try to get back out there and compete. But at 47 years old and another surgery under his belt, I don't know. This looks bad. You know what? Now that I reflect on the Masters, it's a couple weeks old. I think the number one story is Rom taking over Kepka. Uh, I think another another story. Well, Liv was a big story there, but I think another storyline was what Phil Mickelson. Speaking of Liv, what he did on the back nine Sunday at Augusta, incredible at his age. And I think the other one, after watching Tiger try to get around Augusta in the the bad weather, but just making the cut, Jay Bird. And now seeing that he has to have surgery, that's incredible what he was able to pull off. Well, yeah, and, and apparently he had a screw from some of the hardware that was put in his leg come out of his skin. Oh, and, my God. I mean, you start thinking about that, Danny, and it's just it's absolutely brutal. But when you kind of peel back a little bit and go, well, wait a second, we've got the PGA champ. We've got the U.S. Open in eight weeks at Los Angeles Country Club. Well, that's out for Tiger. You think so? Oh, yeah, the PGA, the PGA championship. I mean, this is a pretty major surgery to get your ankle fused. I don't... I don't see the best opportunity would be Hoy Lake, the Open Championship in July. I know it's tough. I just don't know what to think. I felt when the season started that he would win, maybe not a major, but he would win a tournament after watching what he did about a month ago out in California. And then now I watch him and I'm like, I I just don't see it. And if you have a course that's got a lot of undulation, I definitely don't see it. 
and I, I'll ask you, is there a course on the tour that you look at, not even a major, but just a course that is somewhat flat that he'd be able to get around and not have maybe as much pain on a hilly course? I, I don't right. know if there's one out there that uh, would benefit his game like that. One of the interesting ones would be Hilton Head, where we just played. It's probably the flattest. They call it the low country down there, and it's absolutely beautiful there in Hilton Head, and that's one of the flattest golf courses um, that we go to. I got to think about what's on the schedule because, but you know how his focus is, Danny. It's the majors first. And those change all the time. And so Oak Hill in Rochester, New York is a hilly golf course mm-hmm. and he's not going to miss it. Los Angeles Country Club is, I'd say, probably a five in the scale, five to 10. It's got some hills, but it's also got quite a bit of flat being in LA. I don't know much about the Open Championship where they're playing this year. I'd have to do a little research on it, but the one that comes to mind is the Hilton that event, but it's yeah. always right after Augusta and he's I don't he's know. He's always going to play Augusta if he's available. Right, and I don't know if he's ever played at Hilton Head, you wow. know, the week after. So now we have this weekend if you've been watching golf, the team format. So you got a pairing of of guys coming together having a chance to win a team format. And for fans that don't know that, maybe explain what's happening this weekend. Yeah, so it's really fun. You get to play four rounds with a buddy or uh, your partner and when do you ever have a partner in something like this that's not a Ryder Cup or a President's Cup? So this is really a fun thing. It's like, watch how well these guys play with a little security blanket. You know, how nice would it be if you had Patrick Cantlay picking you up? and and, and or um, Shoffley doing that for Cantlay. They went wire to wire last year. And this we event. had Billy Horshaw and Sam Burns, you know, always contend. So you'll watch the scores will be super low. So two of the four days they play a basic best ball event, which would mean you and I are playing Danny and whoever makes a low score in that hole that just gets entered in for our team, then they're going to do the alternate shot. And that's where it can get dicey because you get a bad shot and stick your partner in some really bad spots. When you pull up those scores to see where those guys are doing on that alternate shot deal, you'll know who's really playing the best golf. I know you had a chance to compete in these, but back in the day, it was male and female. So it wasn't male-male, so it was a little different story. It was really fun. It was called the J.C. Penny Classic, and I got paired with um, Penny Hamill a couple times. I think we had a, a third and a fourth, and I got paired with Val Skinner and Judy Dickinson. And I had some great, great partners, but man, they were all straight hitters. And I <laughs> was all not. Over the place. And I can remember Penny saying it to me after the first nine, I think it hit two fairways. And she said, could you try to just put it <laughs> in, in between the trees? And I said, I'm aiming for it. But the fun thing is, Danny, you foul one off into the trees and then she puts you right in the fairway and you get hit from the fairway. That's you right. know, So it's like, eh, oh well. This weekend then, these guys had the chance to pick who they wanted to play yep. with and there's specifications in terms of, of who can play, but there's like a, a brother team out there. Sometimes it's family members. Yeah. Just to have a little fun with it. Absolutely. Matthew Fitzpatrick is playing with his uh, brother, who's also a pro, but not a PGA Tour member. And so they get a special exemption from the Zurich folks. And I think it's fantastic for golf. We have a full schedule of golf all year long. Why not slip something like this in and make it a little more interesting? I wish they did more of this, to be quite honest with you. I, I wish that they would break it up. I wonder if the intensity is down a little bit in this because it's more of a showcase to an extent. However, there is money on the line, so you got to keep that in mind. But I think it just breaks up, like you said, not the monotony of the tour because I'll sit there and watch golf all day, but it's just different, and I think that's a good thing. It is, Danny. Plus, think about it this way. You and I are playing and when we're partners, and I miss my – eight footer and you step up there and get the knock yours in. I mean, it's, it's redemption right there. And you're going, well, the team still made a birdie or an Eagle and let's move on it. That's a lot of fun. Watch how low the scores are. They're playing down in new Orleans at the TPC of Louisiana. And it's a Steve Elkington, Kelly Gibson. And, and I think Pete Dye all had a, a little hand in it. So it's an interesting golf course. Hopefully the weather stays good. The boys will shoot the pads off that place. All right. We're just about set to wrap up the show. Your takeaway. Give me one take takeaway from Lee Trevino? Oh, the passion. At 82 years old, the guy still loves the game. You know that if he was able to, he'd still go out there and try to whip everybody's butt. I just love the energy that he brings to the table. It's, it's hard not to smile, and it's hard not to want to go play golf and and, and think of him as, uh, as such a positive force for the game. You stole my idea. Because yeah. I was going to say energy, passion, love for the game, and still at 82 years old, 
uh, being able to talk about how much he loves it. And the other takeaway I had is when you brought up the point initially in our interview, in such a short amount of time, how much he accomplished. And if he played longer, what would we be saying about Lee Trevino with Nicholas Watson and some of the other greats that we hold in high regard, the elite of the elite? But in such a short amount of time, he was the elite of the elite. Oh, yeah. Six majors in 13 wow. years. That's that's impressive. I mean, I think Tom Watson has eight majors, but he, he had a – and hell, Tom's still playing on Champions, right. Champions Tour Golf. So, yeah, that, that shows you what kind of competitor he was. I love this saying in one of his books or something, Danny, that said you don't know what pressure is until you're playing a $5 Nassau with $2 in your pocket. Yeah, right. Great point. Jay Bird, this is so much fun. Our thanks to Lee Trevino and my thanks to you. This is always awesome to do. Danny, thanks for being on the show. This is Let's just do another one right now. I love this stuff. And how do we end it? Hit them straight, St. Louis. Darty Business Solutions, the title sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing show, is a leader in our community in so many areas. Do they have over 2,500 teammates in over 30 states and three countries? Yes, they do. Are they the largest IT consulting firm in our area? Yes, they are. Are they the largest software developer in the St. Louis region? Of course they are. But here are a few other important things to know about Doherty Business Solutions. They are the presenting sponsor of the Ascension Charity Classic. They are the presenting sponsor and were the first presenting sponsor of the Advocate Professional Golfers event at Glen Echo that will be held there this year as well. They are also the founders of Access Point. This is a community game changer. It builds diversity in the IT workforce. Hundreds of mostly African-American women are getting fifty dollars to $60,000 a year jobs right out of high school. That's right, right out of high school. Ron Darty, company founder, chaired the 2023 Heart Ball this year. It supported the local American Heart Association chapters and raised over $600,000 in one evening. These are more examples of the many things that Darty Business Solutions does in our community. Hey guys, Jay Delsing here, and listen up. Remember this name, Redbird Heating and Cooling. That's Redbird Heating and Cooling. 314-320-9507. This is a family-owned and operated St. Louis business. Owner and CEO Jed Dickinson leads their apprenticeship program called the Veterans Vocational. He will teach and sign off on educational and mechanical work hours while you get licensed, as you get paid working for the company. That's Redbird Heating and Cooling, 314 314- Three two zero nine five zero seven or redbirdhvac.com. Start your new career as a licensed HVAC specialist with Redbird Heating and Cooling. Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend, Jay Delson. Hey, do you like wine? Have you heard about the hottest new wine bar in St. Louis? It's called Wild Crush Wine Bar, and it's located in town and country on Clayton Road, just behind the Straubs. Have you ever experienced self-dispensing wine machines? Well, they are here. The only place in St. Louis and most of Missouri that you'll find them, and it's at Wild Crush. You can choose your size of pour, and Wild Crush will pour the freshest wine in the area for you. The organic argon gas system used at Wild Crush keeps this wine pristinely fresh for up to 60 days. So if you're tired of drinking wine that's been open for a few days, come into Wild Crush for the best and freshest wine selection in the area. Go to wildcrushstl.com and come have one with us. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. 
You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. This is Dan McLaughlin, and a reminder that the Golf with Jay Delsing show presented by Darty Business Solutions can be heard every Sunday at 9, right here on 101 ESPN. Also, Jay and I have teamed up for a national golf podcast, and it's called Beyond the Fairways. Beyond the Fairways with an S. Wherever you get your podcast, download Beyond the Fairways. It drops every Wednesday. You'll hear from golf's biggest names. David Faraday, now an analyst for the Live Tour. World Golf Hall of Famer Tom Watson. Two-time U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange. Andy North, also a two-time U.S. Open champion and one of the top analysts in the game. And so many more. We have a tip segment, the latest equipment and innovations in golf segment, and a betting segment for the top picks on that week's PGA Tour stop. Now, the response to this podcast has been incredible. So if you love golf, please download Beyond the Fairways with an S wherever you get your podcast. That does it for this edition of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. For Jay Delsing, I'm Dan McLaughlin. We'll talk to you at 9 a.m. next Sunday with another edition of Golf with Jay Delsing, heard right here on 101 ESPN.